Hey, you ever set out at sea heading to an adventure island or ghost ship event when suddenly you realize you won't make it? This kind of thing wouldn't happen if your boat could also run on electric. This episode of Lore Arc is brought to you by Hyundai. Aim boats like in Lost Ark, but Hyundai's got a wide range of electric vehicles starting with the 2022 Tucson and Santa Fe plug-in hybrid EVs. Good for gas or electric whenever you need it. Learn more today at HyundaiUSA.com. I think we did have cars in Lost Ark though. Alrighty, everybody. Welcome back to Lore Arc. It's been a while since the last time we gathered around the campfire. The last time was probably a few months ago, actually. Today is the finale of the first chapter of Lost Ark's story. So this is Lore Arc Part 3. We're covering Elgatia as well as the story of the Lazanif, the people, the race, the primordial race created by Prokyon that Beatrice from Trixian, as well as Sidereal Nineve belong to. Uh, this whole segment contains story spoilers for contents that are not yet in the Western version of Lost Ark. Uh, including story bits that were updated just recently in Korea this past week. Uh, so, you know, everything ahead is spoiler territory. Recapping up until this point in the game story, though, we had to remember what led to this because there's quite a bit of a story gap between the events of South Vern and Elgatia. There are the events of Rowan, but Rowan's events are kind of... They're tangential to the actual story. And they give a lot of context on stuff like the Sec the Sacria Holy Faction. Uh, but really, the events of Elgatia stem from the end events of South Vern. At the end of the events of South Vern, you guys all distinctly remember there was the face-off between the Legion commanders and the Sidereals and you before they just kind of piss off and leave. Then you meet up with your Sidereal buddies in their hologram form and they're all like, okay, we gotta deal with each of the Legion commanders and technically each of their respective continents. Uh, up until this point in Lost Ark, actually, you've dealt with two of them now. You've dealt with the resurrected Vaulton, Akan, the plague commander, uh, we call him COVID commander in Korea. He has the power to resurrect the dead and he ends up resurrecting Vaulton. Uh, Vaulton, who still harbors lingering resentments towards Carmine for having given him the suck back in East Lutera. Pretty much just curses out Carmine the, the entire time while he's kind of ravaging the tower, and then you beat him down, and then you beat his ass for the second time. And then, just recently, in this past week, you have uh, fought Vicus, the covetous Legion commander, and the events of that lead to her passing as well. Uh, and so, up until this point, you've dealt with two of the Legion commanders. Now, going by the story, there's actually only three Legion commanders really, uh, really remaining now. Because Voltan has been defeated. Lycus has been defeated. Cook Satan, or I'm sorry, K. Cool Sedon has been presumed to be defeated by you in East Lutera, at least that's what Carmine reported to Relshaza and uh, Kazaros and the others, which means half the Legion commanders have been defeated. The remaining ones are Brelshaza, who's the second in command, Akan, who is the plague commander, and Thamine, who is the strongest of them all. But of course, you and I know that uh, Cook Satan or Kekul Sedon, sorry, I keep saying his Korean name, uh, is still alive. He's still running around. Uh, it's just that the other Legion commanders don't know about this. So, 
Despite defeating the Legion commanders, one thing is still certain among all of the Siderials, and that is the time of Khazaros's corpse becoming unshackled in Mount Antares is still impending. Uh, Kurzan, which is where Mount Antares is located, to the east of Arthatine, uh, has been the domain where Sidereal Lutera sealed Khazaros's physical body 500 years ago during the Chain Wars. During that time, Khazaros has to separate his soul from his body, and his soul departed back to Petrania along with the rest of his forces while he had to leave behind his corpse which was chained inside an active volcano but as we know the time of Khazaros merging back with his physical body is quickly coming and the Sidereals are greatly concerned because the last time this happened in the chain wars 500 years ago it took the full power of the Ark to defeat him. He actually had Lutera, as well as Vergris, cornered and had almost defeated them. And the only thing that was able to actually stop him was Ark Carrier Mystic, delivering the seven Arcs to Lutera and Lutera using the Ark to actually uh, prevail in the end. And so, 500 years later, history is soon about to repeat itself, but there is no Lutera, and uh, you are currently, as the Seeker, on the mission still to find the Seven Arcs. Up until this point, you have found six of them, with the sixth one having been the one that you found in Phaeton. And the seventh one, you're actively searching for, as that is the last piece of the mission that Beatrice gave you at the start of this quest. And so that brings us to the beginning of Algatia's story. After all these events have happened, you arrive in North Vern, and Papa, which is the name of Nineveh's bird mount thing, delivers a letter to you. And Nineveh tells you to meet her at the Whispering Islet, which is the place where you initially found her and where she always seems to be standing. Yeah, I don't know why, but her name she she named she named the bird Papa. I, I don't 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 ask. Okay, I I don't name these characters. But you sail over to Whispering Island. And you rendezvous with both Nineveh and Kadan. So meeting them here, they kind of tell you, or rather Kadan tells you, that the time has finally come to uh, basically go to paradise. Uh, and so you travel over to Arcadia on Albion's back. Uh, I had to mention that starting from this point onwards, uh, Albion is just a taxi. Um, it's kind of sad, considering it's supposed to be a powerful guardian raid, but every appearance of Albion from here on out is just as a taxi service. But basically, uh, they, Nineveh talks about how in order to defeat Khazaros, they need to enlist the help of her race. They need to enlist the help of the Lazanef, who 500 years ago abstained from helping the mortal races against Azaros in the Chain War. While everyone was suffering and mankind's extinction was almost guaranteed, the Lazanef 500 years ago stood back and did nothing but watched from above. So this time, she thinks that in order to win, she needs to convince her people to join on the fight. So, 
you head to Arcadia, and at Arcadia, you uh, you meet up with Poseidon, who's still pissed at you and tries to do his raid white mechanic. But Kadan ends up doing a solo stagger, and then he realizes that he can't actually win, and so he just gives up. And so Kadan uses the power of his sword and he forcibly opens the seal, the gate to paradise, because Elgatia, the land of the Lazaneth, was blocked off from people accessing it by a seal. But Kadan broke the seal on his own. Afterwards, Nineveh, she does a class change. She pays money. And she class changes from female sharpshooter to bard. And she plays a song, and then she summons Albion underwater, and then Albion, you get on his back, and then you get a taxi service. And the taxi service, you fly up through the gate and towards Algatia. So now this is the first time in 500 years that anyone has actually visited Algatia, because Algatia was gated off by this seal. They were technically able to leave, but no one was able to actually visit or enter Algatia up until this point. So this is what it looks like as you're flying on the back of Albion, the flying city of Algatia. And as you make your way over here, it also updates your map, and it gives you the ability to zoom out further on the world map so that you can see Algatia as well, which is pretty cool. As you arrive in Algatia, though, you are immediately met with the city's militia, and a silver-haired dude uh, immediately confronts you. But Nineveh recognizes him, and he recognizes her right away, and it turns out that they are childhood friends. And this character, his name is Azakiel. Azakiel is one of her friends from many, many years ago, and he is one of the Swords of the Lazaneth. Much like Nineveh, the Swords of the Lazaneth, they represent the strongest warriors of their race who are entrusted with uh, with defending their race in case of dangers. Uh, on the way to Elgatia as well, Nineveh also mentions how Elgatia was created by Regulus, the god of order, uh, for the Lazaneth to live in as part of their punishment for what they had done 1,000 years prior. And for context, 1,000 years ago, during the outbreak of the first major war in the world, that was when the Hal, one of the primordial races, had stolen their fragment of the Ark from Antares and were threatening to take over the world. And they were so technologically advanced and powerful that the only hope that the other races had to actually defeat them was for the Lazaneth to take the Ark from their god, Prakyon. And so the two Arks clashed together, and that forced Regulus to intervene. R Regulus's in intervention led to the extinction of the Hal, which almost no traces of them exist to this day, and it also resulted in the wings of the Lazaneth being crippled to the point where they cannot fly anymore. But he did not kill the Lazaneth, he instead kept them uh, in the dreamless paradise called Algatia. And you can see it's a very sunny and happy looking place almost. Uh, it, it just looks very, very, very bright, like a flashbang. It doesn't look like a bad place at all. In any case, Nineveh, she was rather nervous because you have to remember that it had been 500 years since Nineveh had last visited Algatia. You might be wondering why she didn't just immediately 
Oh. Cat. I'm sorry, but I need to be right back. Uh, give me like a minute or two. Alright, I'm sorry about that. I'm still kind of sick, so uh, I'm kind of bad stomach pains. So I might have to take a few breaks along the way while doing this. So please don't mind too much uh, if I need to step out again for another minute or two along the way. But um, let us continue. So. Uh, as mentioned again, it's been 500 years since Nineveh had last been in Algatia. Uh, you would think that after the events of the Chain War, that she would immediately go back to Algatia to help. But if you remember, if you remember when you first discovered Nineveh, she was asleep. She was asleep in Whispering Islet, and she'd actually been sleeping for almost 500 years beauty sleep you know uh, she gets a lot more sleep than all of us during the events of the chain war if you remember her wing was infected by the power of dark darkness she was struck by darkness and it corrupted one of her wings in order to recover uh she needed to actually sleep with the using the power of guardian luen guardian luen had gone through something similar in the past where Guardian Luen was also corrupted by the power of darkness. 
Uh, and so he helped her, but it basically put her in a uh, comatose state until the day of fated destiny arrived, which is when you found her, basically, since you're the seeker. And as you know, these kinds of stories, they revolve around you as the chosen one, yada, yada, yada. So that's why she didn't return immediately. She had been healing and recovering until you eventually found her and woke her up. But yes, you uh, immediately meet Azakiel. Azakiel, he is a... Um, immediately, he's a little wary and skeptical of you, but for the most part, he seems friendly enough. And he almost acts as a tour guide to show you around Algatia altogether. He he brings you to the different districts of the city, tells you about his people and what they do, so on and so forth. Uh, but the rest of the people in the city are a little bit confused because remember, it's been 500 years since they had last seen someone from the ground or Arcacia, and all of a sudden, all these players are flooding in. Hundreds of thousands of chosen ones who are suddenly in Aryanov, which is the name of the capital city in Algatia. At the same time, uh, as you're leaving to basically sightsee around Aryanov, Adon, he says that he's going to operate independently, and then he just kind of... He kind of leaves. But before he leaves, he does mention something. He does mention that 500 years ago, at the events of the Chain War, him and Lutera, King Lutera, had visited Algatia. And during their visit 500 years ago, one of the swords of the Lazaneth rejected Lutera's request to help them against the demons because they had received an oracle from, the, from their god. They received an oracle from Regulus or a prophecy saying that they would not cooperate. And so he expected something similar to happen again. Uh, so you explore around the city, you explore the military district, you, you meet some of the militants and you head to the scroll research area where you meet some of the scientists that uh, basically they create magic. And from here you learn that the Lazaneth are born with an affinity for magic. They know magic to some degree, but the magic that they don't know, they can basically use a they can use battle items. Let's call it that. Actually, it's just a scroll, but they research scrolls that have magic inside of them, and by using the scroll, you can use magic that you don't have an affinity for. The Lazaneth use battle items, so sh so should you, you know? This is like a this is like a, a lesson. Uh well, while exploring, you also meet another one of the swords of the Lazaneth, Ian. Ian has no wings, and he's a very stern and upright man, but he is rather friendly with Nineveh as well, as they are all childhood friends. And she also asks, or she also mentions, you know, I wonder if I'll see Diogenes, uh, to which he doesn't really say anything. Also, you notice that while talking to a lot of the people in the Lazaneth race, that they keep bringing up something about the uh, Spears of Judgment. Uh, some of them bringing, up, bringing it up haphazardly, kind of like cautiously, some of them joking around about it, but you kind of hear about this like God's Wrath kind of thing, but you don't really make much sense of it yet. But Ian is one of the warriors, he's one of the strongest warriors, in the city, and he has been defending the city against depraved souls, uh, which you don't really know anything about up until this point. Uh, they also mention that there's a bit of an issue in this city. Dian mentions that a forbidden magic scroll had disappeared from the Great Library, which houses a lot of the scrolls of their race, as well as forbidden scrolls, which are too powerful and dangerous. Uh, and Azakiel's just like, uh, I gotta go and investigate this. Uh, I'm gonna go check this out. You just go on without me. I'll meet up with you later. And along the way, you while, while sightseeing, at this point it's just you and Nineveh, you guys kind of like have a picnic in the, in the, in the square area, and then uh, you pass by the library, and eventually she invites you to a special place, which is her house. 
you actually uh, visit Nineveh's house and it has a bunch of stuff there and it's been maintained by people uh, while she's been gone for the last 500 years. In her home, though, while she goes and prepares some tea and she says, don't touch anything. And then she's like, just kidding. You can go through my stuff if you want. You go through her stuff and you find some things that are of interest. In her home, you find letters written by King Lutera and Karan when they had last visited Aryanov 500 years ago. Um, you also find a letter on the table that was written by L'Oreal addressed to Nineveh and ta it talked about Beatrice. Beatrice, the Watcher in Trixian, who you met at the start of your journey. And he expressed his sympathies regarding Beatrice having been selected as the Watcher of the World. When Nineveh returns, she answers some of your questions about Beatrice, Lutera, and also something called Kangal. Regarding Beatrice, she kind of makes note and mentions that they grew up together when they were younger, a thousand years ago, and they grew up uh, in an almost sister-like relation, and they were raised by one of the swords of the Lazanith, L'Oreal, who acted like a father figure to them. Or a, maybe more like a mentor than a father figure. Yeah, probably closer towards a, towards a mentor. Beatrice became the Watcher of Arcasia, and they mentioned it as the greatest burden of their race. And Nineveh has been essentially looking for a way to free Beatrice from Trixian, and she shows a lot of envy towards you for having the power to visit Trixian and visit Beatrice whenever you want, since you're the chosen one, since you're the seeker, since you can play the song to go to Trixian. She's saddened that she hasn't seen Beatrice in over 1,000 years and envious of you for the ability to see her whenever you want. Nineveh then goes on to describe Lutera as a very just, a very clever man, and he's someone who just absolutely couldn't get over even the slightest injustice. If something seemed like it was an evil in the world, he would always aim to squash it. Finally, you ask about Kangal, uh, which is something that you found in the letters addressed between Kadan and Lutera, and Inuve describes it as a sanctuary created by Regulus in the past where the light of God is at its strongest. It's a holy place, and in order to actually go to it, you have to cross the mountains, and you also need permission from all of the swords of the Lazaneth go there even. Even if you are a sword of the Lazaneth, you need the permission of all of the swords if you want to visit Angle. We only know that 500 years ago, she traveled to Kangle with Lutera and Kadan to perform an important mission, but she wasn't present to actually see what happened. She only guided them to Kangle, but she doesn't know what they did there. Uh, she then talks a little bit about the arcs, and she talks about how she entrusted her arc that she was given to Tortoik, and the other six Sidereals hid their arcs around the world as well. The arc was split into seven fragments, and then at the end of the events of the Chain Wars, the arcs in their fragments and state were taken by each of the Sidereals and hidden across the world because the reason why this was such a problem in the first place was because the Archbishop Thurmer had gathered the seven arcs and had almost caused a cataclysmic war in the first place, which caused the rift and allowed the gateway from Petrania and Arcacia to grow enough so that they could the demons would be able to invade. So the greed of man uh, controlling a power that was beyond their fathom and scope led them to hide away the arcs until the Chosen One appeared past their trials and would once again gather up all the arcs again to deal with any impending threat, which in this case is the revival of Khazaros. It's basically a repeat of what happened 500 years ago. Nineveh also mentions that Kadan, who you've met and talked to and journeyed with up until this point, is still testing you to see if you are someone who's worthy of have basically gathering all of the seven arcs. He, she, she surmises that he is still testing you even now. Uh, finally, uh, you guys are interrupted as you are having your alone time with Nineveh by Priyuna. 
another one of Elgatia's warriors, she appears uh, and she kind of relays a message from L'Oreal saying to meet them in the Great Temple as the Round Table of the Swords, a meeting of the strongest warriors, will be taking place soon as requested by Nineveh. The Round Table is a special event where the Swords of the Lazaneth gather and they talk about important matters that need to be discussed and the matter can be initiated by any of the swords and Nineveh as soon as she arrives she requested a round table begin so that she can talk about asking them for help in the impending war uh you notice that when Priyuna arrives she kind of acts like a bitch uh to Nineveh she's very very cold towards her and she's also very cold towards you by extension as well as her kind of like acquaintance but she's she's just very stern uh she's not friendly at all at all she's not even trying to be in the least bit hospitable towards you so you and Nineveh embark for the great temple at L'Oreal's request and uh, before meeting with them you uh you kind of explore the temple a little bit and at the top of the temple you find a statue depicting the god Regulus himself uh, to which you and Nineveh pray to the statue for good luck uh, in, you know, requesting their help. You also learn uh, a lot about the gods during this time. Nineveh prays for Lupion, I'm sorry, for Regulus's forgiveness to the Lazaneth, as all of the Lazaneth pray. All of the Lazaneth pray to Regulus daily that he will forgive them for the tr for the sin that had transpired 1,000 years ago when they stole the Ark from Prakion. They are always praying for forgiveness, and they hope that if Regulus will forgive them, that they will get their wings back, that they will be able to fly again like they did 1,000 years ago. Prakion, who gave up his Ark to the Lazaneth, Prakyon is the minor god created by Regulus, and then he in turn created the Lazaneth, so he's like almost like a father to the Lazaneth. He is the one who gave his Ark to, the, to his children during the war against the Hal, and he was punished by not being able to speak anymore. More. He, he had his language stolen from him by Regulus. That was his punishment for giving the Ark away. Along the way, you also pass by other statues. You pass by a statue of uh, Givina as well. And Ezekiel is really surprised that you actually recognize it because that's the statue that you've been delivering the island souls to. Uh, but then he realizes that it sort of makes sense because Givina is the minor god who created humans. So it makes sense that there's statues of Givina down on the ground. You pass by a statue of Aldebaran, who created all the life in Arcasia. So all of the creatures, all the all the, uh, the, the, the fauna, uh, all the animals, Aldebaran created all of those so that the mortal races would have creatures to hunt and eat. A crater is the god of wisdom, and the scholars of the Lazanet, they show a lot of respect. To the, to the god who created the Sylvain, the people who created the race that are in Rohendel. Uh, despite not being their god, Crater bestowed magic arts to all of the races, including the Lazaneth, and so they owe a great deal to Crater as, uh, as, as, as a result of that. Yes, I meant Gianna, sorry, it's a different, different name. Um, so they show great respect, and it's actually pretty interesting. If you play as, an, as a mage class, the dialogue when you talk about uh, Crater to the uh, to the Lazaneth who's kind of like looking at the statue is different. Uh, it's it's kind of cool. They, they change the dialogue if you're playing a Sylvan class as she kind of addresses your god specifically. Uh, one of the statues though is missing during this, and it's the statue that belongs to, or rather belonged to Antares, the exiled god who created the Hal. Um, when what happened 1,000 years ago happened, uh, the Hal were rendered extinct by Regulus, and then 
uh, Antares, who was tricked into giving his Ark away to his people, the people that he created, was exiled. And so the Lazanef, they uh, kind of blew up Antares' statue, and all there is remaining where his statue used to be is smoldering ash. And it's supposed to represent how the Howl were kind of extincted. At this time, the meeting of the swords is commencing, and you kind of run into Kadan, who at the arrival of Algatia kind of went his own way. Uh, you realize that the reason why the meeting of the round table was taking so long to start is because Kadan had met with L'Oreal privately, and they had a little chit chat. And as he passes by you, he reminds you that when the seven arcs finally come together, that your will as the Seeker will be tested, and we don't really know what that means. The swords, uh, the swords end up gathering. And this is also where you meet L'Oreal. L'Oreal placed number two in the popularity polls in 2022 as the second most like likable NPC after uh, Nineveh. Uh, yes, his name is pronounced like the shampoo, so we also refer to him as the shampoo guy. But as the swords gather, Nineveh also notices that one of the swords is absent. And in the in in Diogenes's place, who was supposed to be present, Kriuna, who delivered the news to you that the round table was beginning, joins the round table in his place. Kriuna is kind of present as a fill-in for Diogenes. Uh, and even as she passes by, she kind of gives you the cold shoulder. Uh, kind of still very just cold to you in general and so the round table begins and left to right we have Azakiel, Nineveh, L'Oreal, Kriuna, and Tien and then that's me Ace. Everyone's kind of look at, looking at me like why is a One Piece character here? In the meeting the swords discuss the missing scroll from the Great Library, just matters that need to really be attended to in general, uh, and how the number of the depraved souls has just been increasing. These kind of evil creatures that have been attacking the Lazana out in different areas of Algatia. When it's Nineveh's turn, finally, she brings up what's been going on in the ground, or on the ground, in Arcacia. She talks about how the different things that have been happening and the impending resurrection of Khazaros and how they need to help this time. She reminds the other swords how 500 years ago they did nothing. They didn't, they didn't do anything. They just kind of stood by idly while the demons were invading, and this time, they need to help. He says it's the duty of the Lazana to assist the mortal races in repelling the demons of Petrania. But, just as she's saying that, an oracle arrives. An oracle is a prophecy, and the oracle is interpreted as the message of God. It is the will of Regulus, and what it says goes. Unfortunately, what ends up happening is when they read it, it's determined that the oracle says that the Lazanith must stay in the light. And it is interpreted as the Lazanith may not leave Elgatia, and they will not help the mortal races on the ground. It is the same oracle that appeared 500 years ago, saying that the Lazanith will not help the mortal races. The word is final, as these messages are interpreted by the prophets uh, in one of the temples, and it, what it says is final. You, they, cannot, they cannot defy what it says. But Nineveh is pretty angered by this. Uh, she's, she's, she's pretty pissed off. 
he says that um, if the Lazaneth don't help yet again for the second time now, then they don't deserve to be called the first children of light. Uh, L'Oreal kind of retorts back though, saying that they've always followed the oracles of Regulus and the decision is final. And then that basically ends up concluding the round table, much to Nineveh's and your disappointment. Uh, as you're leaving though, everyone is kind of walking out, but L'Oreal, he kind of asks you to stay behind so he can talk to you privately. And he asks you your reason for coming to, El to Elgatia. It's been 500 years. No one has visited since Lutera and Kadan 500 years ago. He wants to know why you're here. And you respond that you are looking for the Ark that was hidden in Elgatia. And he tells you that the Ark is not there. It is. It, it no longer resides in Elgatia. You tell him that Kadan brought you here. And L'Oreal kind of feels uneasy, and he doesn't really know why Kadan brought you here. And he says he'll look into the matter in general. And then he kind of eases towards you that Kadan is a lot more than what meets the eye. And if you think you know Kadan, you don't know Kadan. But he does reply that even though Nineveh's proposal was rejected, that he hopes that you'll find the answers that you're looking for during your stay in Algatia. But as you're leaving the Great Temple, Azakiel kind of bumps into you and he leaves a box with you before like quickly and hastily leaving. And inside the box, you and Nineveh discover a note that says to meet him in the Great Library. And while wandering the library, you come across a case with a scroll. You're just kind of exploring. She says to look around looking for Azakiel. You kind of wander off to this one area and you find this case and you find the scroll and you touch it and then it stuns the shit out of you and then this blaring alarm goes off and you go full meltdown mode. Then Tian kind of shows up behind you and he says that this area is forbidden and all the scrolls here are very dangerous. But he doesn't suspect that you have ill intent because you're too stupid to read their language. And there was a warning sign placed outside the area, which you kind of passed by without reading. So he doesn't suspect that you're any dangerous at all. But he does mention, which he kind of repeats, that there was an incident not long ago where a forbidden scroll was stolen from this area. Azakiel also shows up and he kind of also pardons you. Uh, and then Tian's just like, hey, don't do it again, dummy. And then he kind of like leaves. Azakiel, he kind of tells you about the power of the scrolls, which you kind of saw when you first arrived through that researcher who kind of explained the scrolls and how it lets people use magic that they're not able to normally use. And he's like, hey, I'll show you a magic scroll. Come to this dark corner of the library with me alone, okay? So you follow him because you trust everyone as the player of this game and you're blissfully ignorant. And you go all to this corner and he gives you a scroll and he's just like, use the scroll. And you use it and it opens up a magic passageway in the library and this this door opens up and you Nineveh and Ezekiel go into the passageway and on the other side of the passageway you meet these other Lazaneth who Ezekiel introduces them as the followers of Diogenes the sword of the Lazaneth who went missing he tells you that they have been secretly meeting to investigate why Diogenes had gone missing. He mentions that L'Oreal had forbidden entry to the temple where the oracles reside, resided over the years. He kind of explains the whole story about how initially the swords of the Lazaneth and the round table were made in order to make just decisions that would help guide their race. But over the last uh, 1,000 years, L'Oreal has basically put himself as a leader-like figure who everyone listens to. But an oracle had one day came down, and this oracle from the prophets pretty much said that anyone who defies the will of Regulus would be struck down by a spear of judgment. 
And from that point onwards, people were regularly dying as spears fell out of the sky and struck them and killed them. And at the same time as all of this happening, depraved souls began appearing in Elgatia, which are these wicked, dark, evil creatures which would attack people, which is why the Swords of the Lazanith have had to defend uh, their areas against the, this new threat. But these spears, uh, the, these spears from, from Regulus that would fall out of the sky, they were interpreted as judgment for Lazanith who have forgotten their sin that they committed 1,000 years ago. And this shocks Nineveh as she says that every Lazanith who is born and throughout their entire life is constantly reminded of the sin that their race committed a thousand years ago. And then nobody in their right mind would ever forget about their sin. She questions if this was a mistake, but this is the very first time that she's ever questioned an oracle, questioned a will of God. Uh, and so she's a little confused here. In any case, with all of this transpiring, Diogenes, he was investigating all of this taking place. He didn't fully trust his oracle, and he he was very suspicious. He was very wary, and he challenged that the prophets may have misinterpreted the oracle, misinterpreted Regulus's message, and that Regulus wouldn't strike down people without a reason. And this was a very dangerous thought to have, but not long afterwards, he disappeared. And this was some years back. Finally, you know, Ezekiel tells you that uh, the fate of Diogenes was that L'Oreal told everyone that he died, that he was also struck by a bolt of judgment for defying Regulus's will, for questioning his will. And he he says that's 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 how Diogenes died. But then Ezekiel's like, well, we're kind of suspicious because the only person who witnessed Diogenes' death, who has an account of Diogenes' death and passing, is L'Oreal himself. And that that's it. O only, he, only he apparently saw Diogenes die. But the problem is... L'Oreal has led their race for almost a thousand years ago, and in that time, he built absolute trust and rapport with, with his race. There is nobody in the entire city that does not listen to what L'Oreal has to say. Remember what I said, this guy was like a, like, they're, they are some old, old people. And uh, L'Oreal is especially old because, like, we see a picture that when... Uh, Beatrice and Nineveh were just little kids. They were, they were just little kids. L'Oreal looked the same as he did now, today. Meaning he's far older than like pretty much everyone else that's present. But this whole thing is like very suspicious. Anyone who looks into the disappearance of Diogenes also suddenly and randomly disappears. And this puts them in a very tough predicament. Do they commit blasphemy and question the will of Regulus, or do they question their own leader, L'Oreal? And you know, it's 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 a tough thing to be uh, to to do when you've lived in ignorance for a thousand years. But at the end of the day, Azakiel he can't accept the sudden disappearance of Diogenes as God's will, and he asks you and Nineveh to uncover the truth as he thinks that there are details that are missing. Uh, just then, one of the disciples of Diogenes appears and says that L'Oreal has appeared outside of the library, and you and Nineveh go outside and confront him immediately. And you basically just like, you're very, you're very like upfront about it. You're like, okay, what happened to Diogenes? What are you not telling us? And uh, L'Oreal says that Diognis was killed in the Garden of Hystera, which was Nineveh's domain and the place that she was supposed to protect. 500 years ago, that was the place that she was protecting. 
until she left to the ground. And then he's kind of like, well, first of all, he, he says, I know you guys are having your little meeting. I know you guys think you're sneaky. I think you, I, I, I know you guys think that I can't see what you're doing, but I know you're meeting with Diogenes' disciples. I know that you're trying to investigate this kind of thing. I've known this whole time. But then he's like, but at the same time, I understand that his passing was a very, very traumatizing experience. I sympathize with you. That's why I allowed Ezekiel to look into this thing. Yada, yada, yada. So he plays like the good guy card, you know? And then he's like, the swords dif protect, the swords of the Lazanith protect the different areas of Ogatia against the, the wicked souls that have been attacking their people. But because Nineveh left with, with, to Lu, with Lutera down to Arcacia, the other swords had to protect her domain for her. And so he basically gaslights the shit out of her. And he says, because you went down to Arcacia, because you did what you want to do, Lazaneth had been dying because the other swords had to protect your domain for you for the past 500 years. And at the same time, he's like, because Diogenes died as well, now we only have a few swords that can actually protect all of the domains in Arcacia. And then he reaffirms that Diogenes was struck down by a spear of light while fending off the tarnished beings. And at the end, he also answers why Priyano was mentioned, was involved in the round table. And then he's like, well, you know, we kind of need a new sword because you left. Theogonus died and uh, the wicked beings, they are kind of growing in number. And she's one of the strongest warriors who protects us on the front lines. So he appointed her as one of the new swords. So finally, he's like, okay, well, anyways, uh, you're back. So how about you do your duty and protect the people that you were assigned to protect in Hysteria Gardens? And then Nina V feels like shit. And she's like, oh my God, he's right. People have died because I went missing and then went to sleep for 500 years. So she's like, come on, let's go to Hysteria Garden. Let's go protect some people. Yada, yada, yada. So then you and her, uh, you guys depart to Hysteria Garden. And... Basically, immediately when you arrive, you encounter these the wicked beings and you see them for the first time and they look like these like dark gremlin evil thingies. But you also meet up with Priyuna immediately who demonstrates some of her power and she kind of like wipes them out right away. And you're like, OK, yeah, she's pretty strong, I guess. I could have killed them in one shot because these are mobs and I'm way over leveled for this area. But that's cool. That's cute that you took like 20 seconds to kill them. Um, but she kind of confronts Nineveh and she mentions that, hey, I understand that things are really bad in Arcacia, but can't you see that things are really bad up here? In El I mean, she says that she things are really bad in Arcacia. She's like, can't you see that things are really bad here in Algacia as well? Isn't it your duty as the Lazanith and one of the swords of the Lazanith to put your people first before the people down on the ground. That kind of stuff. And then Nineveh feels even worse because she realizes that Priyuna is the person who has been protecting her domain for her these past 500 years. Well, as you're traveling around and protecting the different people from the wicked beings, you eventually reach an outpost. And at this outpost, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on, but as you, as you see the wicked beings invading and the Lazaneth running for their dear lives, you kind of want to intervene, but then Priyuna says, stop. And she says, just watch. And then you see these bolts, these spears of light fall from the sky, wiping out all of the wicked beings, but also killing all of the Lazanev who were fleeing from them at the same time. And this really shocks Nineveh. Nineveh, who was about to take care of them herself, she asks why. She asks why Priyuna stopped her and she's just pissed off. And 
Fiona responds that this is Regulus's will. This is the will of God, and you cannot defy the will of God. And... You know, following up on that, Priyuna says, please don't do anything foolish because Regulus is watching you through the Eye of Light in K-Angle. And he'll know if you do anything foolish. And she also mentions that foolish actions that could defy his will would, le would lead to a fate. Uh, it would lead to Diogenes. It would lead to a fate similar to Diogenes, um, who died. And Nineve, she's kind of shocked by this because, she, and she becomes really suspicious because nobody should know how Diogenes died except for Azakiel, Diogenes' disciple, who told Azakiel, and L'Oreal, who who saw, uh, who saw his death. Nobody should know about this. So. You keep traveling around for the time being, just now wary and suspicious, and as you defeat these wicked beings, you notice that there's pieces of the stolen, forbidden scrolls from the Great Library that are dropping from their bodies. As you kill them, you find these little pieces of the scrolls that were stolen from the library. You meet with L'Oreal and Priyuna, who are still in Hysteric Gardens, and then Priyuna and Nineveh just start fighting again from what happened before. They just get in a, in a fight, and L'Oreal tells them to stop because they're scaring the civilians that they're currently treating their wounds. Uh, he tells you that it's not so easy to do what they're doing, and that they made a choice to protect their people rather than defy the oracles that were sent down by Regulus. He says that, you know, he's, he's basically affirming that everything that they're doing is for the greater good, because if they defy the will of Regulus, he'll strike them all down. And then Nineveh tells L'Oreal about the scrolls, the forbidden scroll pieces dropping from the, from the wicked, from the, from the, you know, the, these evil creatures, and L'Oreal says, uh, that's very interesting. I'll have Tian investigate it. And then he gives you a special scroll of healing. And he's like, please, this is one of our best scrolls for healing. Use it if you need to, to heal people who need it. Uh, so you go around and you meet Tian and you help treat the civilians. And then you tell him about the scrolls of Tabu. And then he tells you something similar that Priyuna did. And then that, that you have to follow the will of light or you'll end up like Diogenes. And then once again, Nineveh is like, why does everyone seem to know about this? None of you guys should know what happened to Diogenes, and yet you all seem to know about what happened to Diogenes. In fact, earlier you kind of mentioned that Diogenes wasn't was around somewhere. He just was he just was kind of off doing something. And now that you're now you're mentioning that Diogenes died because he defied the will of Regulus. So the stories don't match up here, Tian. So from here, um, because because of something that Tian said, you head to the Temple of Truth, uh, the place that Diogenes had investigated, uh, pretty much. Yeah, it's the place that Diogenes investigated, where he wanted to meet with the prophets and ask them if they misinterpreted Regulus's oracle. And the entrance of the temple was blocked by L'Oreal, not by him himself, but he had set it up so that it was blockaded, and you had, but you managed to open open the the gate to it by solving some uh, riddle. And when you enter the temple, uh, you realize that the or Nineveh realizes that the layout of the temple has changed. Uh, and as you approach a statue, there's like this bird that flies out of a statue, and Nineveh is like, "Oh, let's follow the bird. It's trying to guide us." I don't know how she kind of got to that conclusion, but uh, as you're following the bird, all the guards in the temple are hostile towards you, and she doesn't really know why. She's kind of confused by this. But you manage to get through all of the trials of the Temple of Truth, and you eventually arrive to where the three prophets are. And this is here where you meet the three prophets, the prophets of the uh, future, the present, and the past.
and you ask them about Diogenes, since really only they would know, right? They're basically the last people that really saw Diogenes in in the first place before all that kind of went down, and they they reveal something that's uh that's really really shocking in general, and that is. The Wheel of Fate, which is where they get their oracles from. Um, have you guys ever seen that one movie, Wanted, with like the curving bullet? How they have like a loom and then they like interpret like messages from that loom and that's what they follow? That really old movie. Uh, basically, they have something similar. It's kind of like a loom as well. And uh, they mentioned that the Wheel of Fate stopped turning since the false destiny began and what this means is they haven't actually gotten an oracle from regulus in a really 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 long time like a really really long time they've just kind of been standing there doing nothing for like hundreds of years there hasn't actually been an oracle from god and what this means is that the oracle that L'Oreal showed you during the round table saying that the Lazeneth must stay in the light, that wasn't real. That was made up by L'Oreal because he couldn't have received it from God because God never sent one. But the prophets, they haven't moved from that spot because they've been waiting for your arrival. You are the chosen one. And they give you some details and they also mention that Beatrice, who is also very well endowed, uh, she was also one of them. Beatrice was also a prophet as well. Uh, so you, get, you gain some context. She as a prophet was chosen as the Watcher. Um, the Watcher of their race is chosen from the prophets uh, as well. And so the prophets also tell you... The, well, the prophet of the future, the one with blue hair, she reveals that 500 years ago, Diogenes approached them seeking the truth. If they're... He, 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 he came to ask about, you know, this whole like, hey, is this really right that our civilians are randomly getting struck down by bolts of, uh, of lights while they're going about their business? And then when he came to visit them, they gave him an oracle because they're able to give an oracle for individual people. And they basically tell him that uh, he would burn away by the light and be forgotten. But at the end of his solitude, the truth would be delivered. And he's just kind of sitting there like, are you telling me I'm going to die? And that's basically it. Yeah, they basically foretold that his death was coming soon. Uh, but... At the end of his solitude, the truth would be delivered. Whatever that means, right? Um, they also reveal to you that while he was foretold his imminent death, that Diognis would go and find a way to delay his passing, to delay his death. And so you leave the temple and you meet with Azakiel outside, who's like surprised that you managed to even get in the temple. And you basically tell him up front right away that L'Oreal has been kind of spinning lies and that according to the prophets, Diogenes is still alive. He managed to delay his death and he's still alive somewhere. And Azakiel is like, yeah. So the oracles give you uh, like a, like a, it's like a, it's a, it's a skine, I think. It's the same. It's like the, the yarn that you loot from uh, Anguished Isle. They basically give you like a little like, Thre like threaded knitted thing which tells you an oracle uh and it 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 leads you pretty much skein yeah skein thank you it leads you to diogenes's father and diogenes's father uh he's just like this nice guy who tends to the garden but he doesn't know where his son went uh and their mother died a really really long time ago because she committed suicide and so he was raising Tien on his own and he's just like this nice guy but Diogenes went missing too and he's like his father tells you that he has been waiting for you and that Diogenes knew ahead of time that you would find his father 
and that it would le it would provide you clues to help you find Diogenes in the future. And the clues that Diogenes left behind were only solvable by playing the Song of Courage, which only you would know. And the reason why Diogenes knew the Song of Courage is because Diogenes was the one who helped guide Lutera to K Angle 500 years ago. And 500 years ago, Lutera was, I guess he was just humming the song. And so none of the other Lazaneth would know about this song except for, except for, well, Diogenes. And so he used that as the key to unlocking the riddle. And so th these clues, they kind of tell you to head to the Skyway of Prakion, which is a place that no Lazaneth had gone to since Prakion had been punished a thousand years ago to search for Diogenes. And you encounter Kadan at the entrance. He just happens to be there. He just actually came from there. And he tells you what he talked about with L'Oreal before the round table began. Remember when the round before the round table began, you saw Kadan pass you by. He had met and talked with L'Oreal in private. And L'Oreal told him that he would meet someone in the skyway of Prakion uh, that he that you guys were looking for. And he tells Nineveh to hurry because Diogenes is waiting for her. So you know that he's up ahead. But you find Diogenes and he is in a frenzied state. Once you subdue him though, his silence is lifted and he is able to tell you the truth. Diogenes says that every oracle that had come to be for a long time now was made up by L'Oreal. He just tells you upright and that the spears of light that had been come that had been crashing down on people, including him and countless civilians of the Lazanef were also sent by L'Oreal as well. He's been the one that's been delivering God's punishment with the spears of light. He leaves behind a note that says that everything leading up to this moment was premeditated by L'Oreal. Everything, including her leaving down to Arcacia 500 years ago. Everything has been planned by L'Oreal from the beginning. So you leave. Uh, you leave the Skyway of Prakion as Diogenes has passed and you have learned the truth. Along the way, you pass by Diogenes' father and he asks you if you found Diogenes and it actually gives you, the player, the choice to tell him, uh, yes, your son is dead or no, we didn't find anything. And the dialogue changes depending on what you pick. And then you, uh, you play your little song on your little flute and you head back to Ardianav, the city where you head to the Great Temple to confront L'Oreal immediately. And so Nineveh goes ahead, she confronts L'Oreal, and you kind of eavesdrop in the back. And L'Oreal tells you that everything that they have been doing has been done in order to betray the light. So you, so she confronts L'Oreal in the Great Temple, and L'Oreal tells you that everything that he has told, well, he tells Nineveh, again, you're hiding, you're eavesdropping in the back. Uh, not very well, as you can see, I'm kind of out in plain sight. It's really easy to see that I'm spying on them, but apparently they have a very narrow field of view. Uh, L'Oreal tells Nineveh that what he taught her and what he taught all of the Lazanef growing up that Regulus was protecting the Lazanef and that they must always follow the light was a lie that he fabricated in order to keep them in control. And so... L'Oreal opens up this passageway 
it, it it's revealed that the, the the table that the round table which is literally a round table is able to sink into the ground and a passageway appears and when you descend down this passageway you are led and greeted by this sight which reveals the legacy of the how cube yes for those of you guys who have not been paying attention to the story up until this point the cube dungeon which you have been doing is actually related to the game's lore so we are reminded that the hal were eradicated and the prakyan was stripped of language the Lazanith had lost their wings and were sent to Algatia. And Nineveh says that Regulus created this paradise for them out of his love and consideration for the Lazanith, who committed a grave sin, but he was like, Oh, I'll make this nice little floating island for you. Oh, you'll never have to worry about food or pooping or anything like that. This place will be perfect for you. And that's what Nineveh believed this whole time. And L'Oreal retorts, Asking if locking birds in a cage can be considered love. And he reveals the truth. That long ago, spears of light fell down on the Lazanith, burning away their wings for their sin of stealing their ark from their god. And he says that Regulus never had any intention of showing any mercy or forgiveness to the Lazanith. But Regulus did give them one chance. And he tells the Lazanith, if you promise to keep the key, I will not punish you all. You don't know what this key is. And in return, they forfeited their race's future deprived of the right to dream and forced to stay in Algatia. And that's why Algatia is also called the Dreamless Paradise. L'Oreal used the cube to view the events of countless timelines. It, it's actually revealed that the cube is a special technology that lets you simulate different timelines. It lets you punch in some values and then the cube will show you a simulation of what will happen in the future based off of the variables that you punched in. And L'Oreal did this over 670 million times, which literally means that he ran Cube Dungeon over 220 million times with X3 tickets. He has done over 220 million cube runs in the last 1,000 years. And in one of these timelines, he finds one where Kazros is resurrected, resulting in Elgatia's collapse. This is a timeline where Kazros comes back to life and destroys everything. And so he has a solution. He has his solution, which is K-Angle. K-Angle, which Nineveh told you at the beginning when you met her at her house, was a, was a holy sanctuary where the light of God is at its strongest. However, there's something in K-Angle called the Eye of Light, which L'Oreal intends to use as a weapon. And in order to protect Elgatia, he will use it to eradicate all of the demons in Arcacia and purify the entire world down below. Nineveh, though, she protests this because in doing so, he will also kill all mortal races at the same time. And uh, L'Oreal doesn't mind. He says to protect his people, he does not mind making sacrifices. And so he will kill everything down in Arcacia using Kangle as a weapon. And then he kind of, uh, he, 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 besides for revealing his plan, he offers to, for Nineveh to join him, join him in protecting their people. 
but she refuses. Nineveh is good girl, okay? She's she's good girl, best girl, and she's like, no, you can't do this. And then L'Oreal's like, well, I knew you were going to say that because I saw it in the simulation. So he pulls out a sword and stabs the shit out of her and then pushes her down off the platform. And then you dive after her. Well, after that, everything blacks out completely, and then a voice calls out, playing the search history of the 670th million, 59,855th timeline, and literally says, word for word, I'm not even interpreting this, welcome to the cube. Yes, it actually says that. You wake up. But you are not in your own body. You are in the body of L'Oreal because now you are in a simulation. Nineveh also happens to be here because she also fell in the cube. But the way the cube works, only one person can actually control the simulation at any given time. So it shows you. And Nineveh is just kind of there as like a side character. But she's conscious of what's going on. So like she's she's aware of what's happening. Uh, and while you're there, you actually run into another Nineveh, a second Nineveh. So now there's two Ninevehs. But this Nineveh is blissfully ignorant. She does not know anything about the ground. She doesn't know anything about you or the Sidereals or anything. And then you realize this is a simulation of a timeline where Nineveh never joined the Sidereals. When Lutera came to enlist the help of the Lazanith 500 years back, this is a timeline where Nineveh didn't follow him back down to Arcacia, and they left empty-handed. So it's a completely innocent and ignorant uh, Nineveh. And, well, not long afterwards, the sky turns scary red, Uh, everything looks ominous. And then Kazaros appears. And then he kills everybody. Those are supposed to be the black wings of Kazaros. He just kills everybody. He just, yeah. You very, very briefly also see Beatrice up in Trixian, and then she's saying that L'Oreal would have saved him. And this timeline is supposed to reveal to you that... In order for their race to be saved, L'Oreal had to let Nineveh go down to the ground with Lutera down to Arcacia after during the events of the Chain War. He knew that in order to prevent this fate for his people, Nineveh must go and join the Sidereals. And so after that, uh, the cube plays a new simulation, and this one is the 531,452,113th timeline. I actually wrote, the, wrote that down. Um, and you kind of go into this timeline, and everything is dark. People are injured all over the place. You're in the same great square. People are hurt. You have to go around healing them. You meet up with the other swords of the Lazaneth, and then they're like, everything is shit. Everyone is dying. The demons are pushing us on every single front. L'Oreal, what the hell do we do? And then you're like, well, what if we ask for help from the Sidereals? And then they're like, no, the Sidereals can't help us. They're busy. They're also being pushed back down on the ground. And also there's only six of them. So what, what do you expect to do? Like, what do you expect them to do? The Inove's down there and there's only six of them. That's what they respond to you with. And you're like, hold up. Did you say six? And then uh, you get this scene. And you figure out who is missing. While Nineveh joined Lutera in this timeline, Kadan is not one of the Sidereals in this timeline. And so there's only six of them, which leads to Nineveh's death 
and also leads to everyone else's death. Even Azakiel tells you that the Sidereals composed of Sylvains, Azena and Inanna, Yaws, Shandy, Humans, and Dwarves, and Nineveh. Almost implying, like, Kadan isn't one of those things. Who knows? But the swords of Algatia fall in the encroaching darkness, and they ask, why does Regulus sit idly by while everything is being swallowed up by darkness? And in Nineveh's final moments confronting Feymine, she utters the words, Arcacia needs Kadan, before she is killed in this scene. But you have seen this scene before, and the last time you saw this scene, Kadan protected and saved her here. You move now to the 157th timeline. Oh, this is, uh, this is from that same timeline, the 500 millionth one, where, uh, a dark nuke drops down and blows up Arcacia. It's just the ending to that timeline. So now you move to the 157th timeline and this is a very early timeline a lot of the lazanet that you met in the previous timelines are much younger in this timeline and uh, it's you, you can immediately tell it's way further in the past and you meet a child of the lazanet and she tells you it has been 200 days since you l'oreal met with regulus in person you actually met with god meaning that this is during a time where the gods were still in an accessible place. So you figure that this was about 1,000 years ago, around the time of the first recorded war, when Zazma invaded Arcacia. And in that war, Elazeneth did participate in that fight. And so in that time where you went out on your little adventure to speak with Regulus, Everyone has been waiting for you to come back because you went to go to talk to Regulus. Everyone's like, oh, if L'Oreal went to go talk to him, L'Oreal will be able to get Regulus to forgive us for the sins we committed, and then we'll be able to fly again. But the simulation kind of breaks when the girl mentions that you brought something to Regulus, something to Regulus uh, all those years back, and you find... Uh, another cube, which pretty much teleports you to another area in the same timeline. So you, it's just another place, but you're still in the 157th timeline. And this place has soldiers who fought during the first recorded war. Uh, so again, this is supposed to remind you that the Lazanet did help during this war. They helped in the war 1000 years ago, but in the chain wars 500 years ago, they abstained and they just watched. And you find the, gir the girl from before, she followed you, and she witnesses a soldier's death, and she's really sad, and she's like, he, saw, he, he got to see the light before he passed, right? But when you try to talk to her, you say stuff, but words won't come out. While you try to comfort her, the L'Oreal in that simulation said nothing. He just, he was just silent, and it really frustrates the child. And then she says that he must have seen the light, because L'Oreal brought the Ark to Regulus. Regulus must have forgiven them because L'Oreal brought the Ark to Regulus. He is the one who delivers the Ark to Regulus. And then L'Oreal says that God never intended to forgive them from the very start. To which now spears from Regulus become start falling from the sky, killing everyone, including the child. And then one more falls and kills L'Oreal as well. And before he dies, he mentions that if God won't give them salvation, then they must save themselves 
implying that at this point he already knows of the cube technology and he is already aware of what he must do viewing all the future timelines to find one where he can free his people without the help of Regulus which is what kicks everything off so now after that timeline you wake back up back in reality and you're greeted by Kadan, and he tells you that many days have passed, and you have to meet Azakiel. He's also fully aware of the cube technology, and he tells you don't think too hard about it, it's just a simulation. Everything that you saw in the cube was just a simulation, okay? Don't let it shake you up too much. And as you are leaving, you see a separate scene. And it's a scene where Kadan swings Navanos and opens up what appears to be a portal. And Carmine and Armin step out of it. And so you now know that Kadan has helped Carmine and Armin infiltrate Algatia. Azakiel tells you that L'Oreal is headed for Kangle, and you're, and you know, you're already aware that he's planning on using Kangle to wipe out all life in Arcacia, and you have to stop him, and you tell Ezekiel about this. Ezekiel tells you that the garrison soldiers are going to stop L'Oreal, because, you know, you can't go to Kangle without the permission of all the swords, and he's like, we have to find Tien, Tien will help us in stopping L'Oreal since, yeah, you know. You head to Tien's office, and then you go through his shit, and then you actually realize that Tien has known about L'Oreal's plan to use Kangle this whole time, and that he's been on L'Oreal's side this whole time. And the garrison soldiers are under Tien's control, and so the garrison soldiers are definitely not going to do shit to stop L'Oreal going to get to, to Kangle since they have to listen. Tien. But you also go through his stuff, and Tien's note mentions that L'Oreal changed at some point, uh, and he's been hiding. He's been hiding the fact that the key is no longer in Algatia. He's been hiding that from everyone. In a recording, L'Oreal tells Tien that the oracles haven't actually come down in a long time. And so now Tien actually knew that all of those oracles were lies as well. But L'Oreal tells Tien that in order to regain their wings, they have to escape from the false destiny. So they have all left for Kangle to use the Eye of Light to fulfill L'Oreal's plan. And this is the same place where Lutera found the key 500 years ago. You start chasing after L'Oreal, and in his wake, there's just so many injured and dead Lazaneth who tried to stand in his way. Uh, he he just he just orders them to just get the hell out of the way and anyone who doesn't get out of his way, they just kill on the spot. Uh, they have no time to waste on that. So L'Oreal manages to force and open the path of light to open the way to Kangle, so he's like way ahead of you already. And this was against the protest of the scholars in the Hall of Crater, which is where the scholars reside to, you know, do scholarly things, right? And Azakiel asked Nineveh why they went to Kangle 500 years ago with Lutera, and she says that Lutera mentioned that they need the key in order to win the war. The location was given to them by Vergris. Vergris told them that the key was in uh in Algatia. And remember, they were seeking the key, and Tian mentioned in his notes that L'Oreal has been hiding from the rest of the race, that the key that Regulus told them to, you know, look after is not in Algatia anymore. So, you know, try and start piecing two and two together here. Um so she guided them to Kangle, and Lutera retrieved the key, and that was instrumental to their victory. 
An audio recording reveals that L'Oreal killed the scholars when they said that they would only listen to Regulus and the Will of Light. Uh, even They will not listen to L'Oreal, who is trying to force open the way the K-Angle. And then L'Oreal is like, you shouldn't have mentioned him before you hear the sound of all of their murders. One of the scholars helps you by casting a spell, which details a map of K-Angle. And it's kind of like a blueprint or a schematic. Uh, and it also shows you the Eye of Light, what the Eye of Light looks like. Um, but yeah, you, you basically get like a like a view of what uh, K-Angle is supposed to look like and the Eye of Light itself. You travel south and uh, eventually you do actually just run into L'Oreal who is waiting for you for some reason, right? And when you encounter L'Oreal, he's at this like pillar thing and he's surrounded by the wicked beings and he he does something to the pillar and the pillar absorbs all of like the evil creatures around him. And when he when he does that, uh it actually um it actually creates like this scroll which he passes over to Ian. Uh, so it, it becomes evident that these forbidden scrolls that the Lazenith had that were in the Great Library were being created by sacrificing these souls to, to, to create them in the first place. And so that's how they got these scrolls. Uh, he says that, and then, and then you actually just, like, walk up to him, and then he nonchalantly talks to you, right? And he says that he has seen numerous timelines of your story. He says he has seen a timeline where the reinforcements didn't come to help you when the Mayhem Legion, led by Cook Satan, attacked the Borea territory back in East Lutera, and you were left to fend for yourself. He saw a timeline where, in the Black Rain in Phaeton, the uh, Avesta and Jederico's forces did not cooperate. He saw a timeline where they didn't work together and Jederico's forces didn't arrive to help them. And he saw a timeline where everyone didn't rally together when the Throne of Chaos descended in South Vern with all the Legion commanders. He has seen all of these things happen. And then he asks you if the world could truly be saved. He says then that he will defy the scheduled fate of his people by eradicating all the demons and life in Arcacia and prevent Khazaros' resurrection. And he is certain that his choices would free the Lazanith from their cage and imprisonment. Then he literally fucking walks away to K-Angle saying if you want to stop him, stop him there. And you let him walk away for some reason, which still makes no sense to me why you don't just stop him right then and there. You just watch him slowly walk away. I, do, I, 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 I don't get that part of the story at all, by the way. You just stare and he just walks away. He's like, yeah, just meet me over there. So, Azakiel meets with you and examines the statue L'Oreal used to sacrifice the wicked beings, and he says that the forces of Taboo are inside it, the specific powers of evolution, synthetic, and flight. And L'Oreal is creating forbidden magic scrolls to forcibly give back his people the power of flight. And all these scrolls were of, 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 of Taboo were made by sacrificing these wicked beings. And so it's Azakiel's plan to reverse engineer the pillar, I don't know how, to make a special scroll that could be used to fight against L'Oreal's soldiers. So he's like, oh yeah, go, go deal with their soldiers while I do this. And so you go beat up some of L'Oreal's soldiers and you find a note on one of them and it reveals that they knew of L'Oreal's plan. They knew that L'Oreal was working with forbidden magic. 
and that they were being sacrificed and transformed into these evil creatures and that they would be willing to be sacrificed if it means that their people would be able to fly again. And that pieces this whole thing together. L'Oreal has been transforming their people. He has been transforming Lazeneth into wicked creatures and sacrificing them to create scrolls in order to give back their people flight. And so... You now make your way to the Celestial Constellation Sphere, which is one of the things that you need in order to go to K-Angle. And there's a bunch of soldiers who are instructed by L'Oreal to stop you. But you reason with them, saying that this is all ass backwards, and that his sweet little promises of flight and saving the world come at a cost. And they're like, yeah, he's right. And so they let you through. And so operating the Celestial Constellation Sphere, a device used to observe the universe, it gives you the power needed to pass the gateway to K-Angle. And so now you head to the Eternal Cliff, and this is the place that houses the gateway to K-Angle, which is now being guarded by Tien, right? And now, Tien uses the scroll that L'Oreal made like five minutes ago, and remember, Tien doesn't have wings, okay? He was made fun of his whole life for not having wings. He's like, God damn it, I wish I had wings like the rest of the people around here. And he uses this scroll. And what happens? He gets wings. He gets synthetic wings out of it. So then he's like, I will stop you here. But then you beat his ass down. And then he's like, well, since I lost here, I guess I'll just die. And then a bunch of spears of light come flying in, but then they all blow up midair because Kadan came and blew them up because he's that strong for some reason. Uh, he Kadan just kind of flies in with his theme playing, and then he's like, he literally looks at Tien and he's like, word for word, he says, "Idiot, you can't even choose your own death," before just walking past them. Tien regains some of his sense. And then he's like, okay, you guys had to Kangle. De but be careful because you're going to be dealing against the power of Regulus himself and the Eye of Light. And in the meantime, I will go fix this whole mess I created because the forces of Azakiel and the Lazaneth militia were clashing with L'Oreal's soldiers, and he's like, I'll go fix this so that they stop killing each other. Uh, so then, Nineveh, she, uh, she performs a clash change again back to a bard, and she summons Albion again. And remember what I said, Albion is still just a taxi service. Uh, the badass boss is just a taxi nowadays. And then you kind of fight. As you arrive, you know, to the gateway of Kangle. Albion helps you a little bit, but then you hear Vergris's voice. Yeah, you hear Vergris's voice, and uh, he's like, okay, um, Albion, I need you to come over here. And then you're like, yeah, you, you do that. It's just, just, we're, we're good here. You're not really doing much anyways. So Albion leaves. You fight through all of the guards protecting the gateway to Elgatia, and at the end of it, uh, Nineveh fires a arrow into the sky, and then, and then, a G2G enjoyer ascends into the sky, and then you jump on its back because this thing is going to bring you to K angle and in order to go to K angle you have to cross the Columinimus I don't make these names okay it's a scary looking light portal thing but while you are traveling on this whale's back you realize that the whale that you are traveling on is doing legit 
RNT and using the Royal Crystal, the Blue Crystal in exchange, so you can't call him a G2G Enjoyer anymore. However, real G2G Enjoyers start tailing you, and then Kadan says that he will personally give them a three-day ban. So he stays behind and fends them off, banning them one by one, while you make your way over to K-Angle. Uh, and then the whale that you're traveling on realizes that they spent their life savings on pixels and crashes into the ground, and you're like, you did your job. Good work. And that finally, at last, you have arrived at K-Angle. So along the way, now, L'Oreal's still up ahead, you have to pass through these trials in Kangle, right? There's a bunch of Kangles, things that are stopping you and in the way. And along the way, you also encounter Priyuna, who also has a Forbidden Scroll, which also gives her wings. But then you kind of beat that ass down, and then you're like, okay. And, uh... She pretty much fought under the banner of protecting the liberation of the Lazaneth. And um Yeah, I I I I guess I guess she tried her best, but you 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 beat her up too. Uh But you finally intercept L'Oreal at the eye. You've arrived at the eye of, of Kangle. And he wonders how many times has this moment repeated in the many timelines that he has viewed. And he attempts to use the eye to literally, as, as an orbital satellite, to fry you. He wants to use the power of the sunlight to literally burn you to a crisp, but being the pro gamer that you are, you hide in the shade where there's no sunlight like a gremlin and you don't get incinerated and so l'oreal absorbs regulus's light straight from the source yes the eye itself and he's hoping to do away with you for good now he says that the chosen destiny is over and he will choose his own destiny and he is too powerful in this state and then he whoops your sorry ass but then who comes to help you in these dire straits Armin and uh, Carmine come out of a portal pretty much to save your ass when you need it there. Like they, they, they actually just nonchalantly walk out of a of a portal and then Armin protects you with some like barrier thing, right? 
Uh, yeah, that's my recording. I didn't have a good name. I, I had to like name all these so that I know which recording is which. So Armin, he like comes out of a portal. He protects you with a barrier. You look at him. He looks at you. You guys haven't seen each other in like four years since the events of the of the abandoned the Lost Wind Cliff. You know when he left with Carmine the last time after the events of Solus. You literally haven't seen him in like four years, and that's the first time you're seeing each other again since then. You just kind of stare at each other. So they send off L'Oreal, and it's your mission to now, you know, make your way up to the Eye of Light and destroy the Eye of Light, which is the source of L'Oreal's unending power. It is, uh, it is where he is getting his infinite power from, which allows him to fight Carmine, Armin, and Kadan toe-to-toe -to -toe solo, right? And... You know, you meet with Armin because Armin literally got flung like a fucking rag doll into a wall near you. And he's like, he tells you that L'Oreal has fused with Kangle itself in the Eye of Light. And there is a bit of an issue. If you destroy the Eye of Light, then Kangle will fall out of the sky and land on the Tukis, wiping them out. And we cannot have that. Like a, like a, like a goddamn meteor. But if you leave him alone then he'll use k-angle and kill everybody including the tukis and so there's really only one solution here don't look at the panties. By the way, I don't know how Nineve gets here because he literally knocked her off the platform. So yeah, while they were, sorry, wrong scene. While <laughs> that was my, that was my private mansion. While they were holding off L'Oreal, you go up to the Eye of Light and you destroy the Eye of Light. Uh, but then you kind of get flung off like a rag doll, and then Kadan has to protect your sorry ass, and then Ninive gets ready to fire one more arrow to defeat L'Oreal once and before. Uh, for all as he's about to summon all of his strength and then you get up 
and then you fling your ragdoll body into the eye of light which somehow destroys it i don't know how that works and that stops him from having an infinite source of power which gives Nineveh the strength to fire that arrow and then he tries to do that one thing from fate stay night where he makes like a bunch of disc shields except the arrow goes right through all of them and kills him but after l'oreal falls down onto the ground he says that with the Eye of Light destroyed, everything will start anew, and the Lazanith will finally be freed from their cage. Pichinuni <sighs> I need to ask how that one little piece of ground stays floating with him. Because that really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. <笑>なんて言ってんじゃん。<笑><笑> Lazenis는 배신자로 낙인 찍혀 멸망했고 당신은 언제나 아크라시아를 혼돈으로 이끌었다. In their dialogue that's happening just between the two of them. L'Oreal says that Carmine has finally acted, and then Carmine retorts that his future does not need L'Oreal meddling in it. However, L'Oreal responds to him in saying that in every single timeline that L'Oreal witnessed in the cube, in every simulation that he saw, the end of every simulation was always the same. The Lazenef would be branded as traitors and eventually led to extinction and Carmine was always the one in every simulation that led Arcacia into chaos. Chunbihera.
운명의 빛이 비로소 세상의 끝에 닿았으니 약속의 때가 되었다. 키운 시간이 되돌려지고 있어 재밌군 피조물을 위해 주인에게 맞서는 선택을 할 줄이야 라제니스 네가 이 모든 것을 그려낸 거로군 여기서 무슨 일이 일어날 것인지 그것을 위해서 무엇을 희생해야 하는지 그리고 그릇의 존재마저도 모두가 간과하고 있지 의도를 드러낸 당신이 얼마나 두려운 존재인지 하지만 나는 현재를 비틀었다. 이제 네가 그린 미래는 오지 않을 것이다. <웃음> 글쎄, 과연 그럴까? 스스로 모욕과 오물을 뒤집어 쓴 라제니스라. 역시 그 아비의 그 자식다운 선택이군. 당신 역시... 결국 이미 정해진 결과의 조각 당신은 반드시 오늘을 후회할 것이다 완성되지 못한 자요 질서에 사로잡힌 자는 영원히 아, uh, sorry, the character models don't look that good because I, when I was recording this part I had the texture quality on the lowest 세상에 아름다움을 들린다 닿지 않았던 신의 목소리가 Oh! Fancy seeing you here Watch the building just pop in oh. 이제 미래는 이어지리라 Okay, so going back into what happened there. Uh, so as all the rubble is like descending and everything and it's going bad, all the people, they're trying their very best to protect the rubble from falling and descending into Arcacia. And then a bird flies by and then time stops. And then you hear something, something prophetic about the light reaching the end of the world uh, and about the destiny. And then time begins reverting. The bird flies up into the air as all the rubble returns back to the way as it was. And as it passes by Carmine, you you pretty much hear him utter the name Procyon. And that tells us that Procyon, the god, the minor god who created Elazanith, who was stripped of his language, intervene to save everyone and this is a really big deal because after the events 1000 years ago the minor gods were exiled so that they would not interfere with mortal affairs anymore and this was forced on them by regulus meaning that 
Procyon defied the will of Regulus himself, his own creator, to save his children and Arcacia. As they are talking as well, uh, Carmine and um, L'Oreal, you, you, you become... It, it becomes abundantly clear that everything was still premeditated even up to this point. Meaning L'Oreal has planned everything even up to this point. He knew that all of this was happening. And we now know that in almost 700 million different timelines where the world was sent to ruin, where Carmine would lead the world to chaos, and where his where his people would be branded traitors and killed, there was one timeline where none of these would happen, but in order for this timeline to actually occur, he would have to play the part of the villain, and he would have to sacrifice himself. moment we're going to watch a video by a korean animator uh a korean animator named weebok you guys have probably seen his animations before but this one i think does a very good job of summarizing everything that we saw up until this point in the story and then we will continue One second. Sorry guys, I forgot that I had to mute the sound there for a second. Come on, Elgashia's way the door is open. Now Albion will be able to take us to that place. Hey, Albion, come on. Oh, that Aki, where did you buy this? Oh, that's right. But do you have a jacket on your head? Ah! Ah! Dinabu, Chongmal, what am I going to do? Also, what a Dinabu, what am I going to do? She's a young mother, a maki, a lajinis, a himi, pidua dago. Laurie, even much a crusher of women, a son of so. Moving into a tabuke tongue. Near again, i 마침 새로운 신탁이 내려왔으니 확인해 보는 것이 좋겠군. 아, 똥마려. 못 도와주겠군. 아니 미친 뭐 저딴 개잡신이라 했어. 누나부, 엘가시아가 뭔가 이상해. 실종된 디오게네스를 찾아서 진실을 알아야겠어. 꽤나 위험한 어? 길을 가겠군. 그렇다면 이 스크롤을 전해 주도록 하지. 어? 저건 엘가시아 최상급 치유 스크롤이잖아. 나오리엘, 이렇게 귀한 걸 누구한테 쓰라고? 네가 쓰면 되겠구나. 어, 나오리엘, 너이 새끼. 어머, 니가 봐, 괜찮아? 절구, 절구. 아니, 스크롤을 쓰라고, 이 빅시나. 6억 7천 번째 교보에 오신 것을 환영합니다. 아, 씨발! 방금 큐브를 6억 7천 번 돌려는 꿈을 꿨어! 눈 뜨자마자 뭔 헛소리래? 큐브 같은 개노잼을 6억 번이나 돌릴 미친놈이 어딨니? 어? 방금 어디서 소리가... 
뭔데? 쟤 진짜 큐브 6억 수한 거야? 아니 그 정도로 미래가 안 보이면 그냥 다음 생을 노리세요 이 미친 자야 라제니스는 수천 년간 아무것도 결정하지 못했다 이 순간이 얼마나 반복되었을 거라 생각하고 근데 이 새끼는 아까부터 칼빵 내놓고 뭐가 저래 당당하냐? 아니 그러니까 큐브 때문에 미친 게 확실하다니까 <웃음> 좋은 선택이다 아니 자꾸 무슨 소리 하는 건데 한발더 쏴버린다 어? 아! 어? 나 아직 안 찍었나? 거, 그런가 본데? 존경하라 아크라시아는 붕괴하고 있다 그대들이 아! 존재해야 하는 이유를 증명하라 이결이 반갑습니다 이번 아크라시아 정화안건 담당 변호사 배 아트리스라고 합니다 이분 아크 다 모았어요 증명하였다 와 살았다 배 변호사 최고 그럼 변호사 선임비는 골드로 부탁드릴게요 어, 네? 어, 그 골드요? 어, 혹시 수호강석으로 드리면 안 될까요? <웃음> 뒤지고 싶으세요? 큐브 속에서 가능성을 헤매이며 수없이 많은 미래를 보았다 비로소 라제니스는 낙원이라는 세 장에서 해방될 것이다. So that's uh, like the quick summary and I'll give you the link to the video and when we put this on YouTube as well, I'll, uh, I will probably omit this part or just uh, keep it and then credit accordingly. But you guys should, oops, sorry, no backslash, no backslash. You guys should absolutely check out this video and subscribe to Weebok because uh, all of his animations have like English subtitles. So you can, even you can understand them uh, in the context that they're provided. They're really, 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 really good videos. Uh, so definitely uh, give them a subscription since you'll be able to enjoy that type of video as well. Okay, so um, that was like a quick recap. They also included some things that we need to get to as well, but we will uh, get to them in a moment. Uh, it covered a little bit of details that I didn't get to just yet, okay? So L'Oreal, he pretty much... Uh, finally just dies um and then Nineveh is surprised that Prakyan appeared I think everyone there like everyone who was up there kind of realized that it was it was Prakyan or at least the energy of Prakyan or what felt like the energy of Prakyan and then Kadan walks over to you and he's like you know what Okay, you passed my test. You can have the last arc that I hid here in Algatia. Yeah.
이제 마지막 아크는 계승자에게 인도됐다 카단 대화가 필요할 것 같군요 에스더 니나부 루페온과 대면한 에스더 루테라는 카제로스를 봉인하는 것에 그쳤습니다. 더큰 희생을 막기 위해. 그걸 네가 어떻게 알고 있는 거지? 500년 전 당신들이 카양겔로 가야만 했었던 이유. 우리는 열쇠의 행방에 대해 알고 있습니다. 엘가시아의 문을 열어주십시오, 카단. 드디어 이곳에 모였군. 같은 목적을 공유하는 자들이 말이야 빛의 질서를 지키는 자와 혼돈의 질서를 파괴하는 자 그렇지 않나, 카다? 너희가 알아야 할 이야기가 있다. 이야기? 어... 재미있을 거야. <웃음> 대답하지 않는 고결한 신에 대한 이야기니까 말이야. 아크에는 거대한 힘이 담겨 있다. 무언가를 창조할 수도, 소멸시킬 수도 있는 힘. 마치 전지전능한 루페온처럼. <웃음> 하지만 세상의 불안과 탐욕은 루페온이 아크를 소유하며 시작되었습니다. 질서는 그것을 감추기 위한 족쇄일 뿐. 믿기지 않는단 표정이로군 하나 묻도록 하지 권력을 쟁취한 자들은 탐욕의 대가를 치르지 않고 죄 없는 자들은 대답하지 않는 신에게 울부짖고 있지 루페온이 만든 삶과 죽음, 처음과 끝 생명의 순환 속에서 빛으로 가득했어야 할 라크라시아의 질서가 무너지고 있는 지금이야말로 혼돈 그 자체이지 않나 무려 빛과 질서의 신이 다스리는 세상이 말이야 모든 것은 이 세상에서 루페온이 떠났기 때문이다. 질서와 혼돈, 빛과 어둠 모든 것을 소유하기 위해 지금은 실감할 수 없겠지 
아크를 모으는 것에만 열중해 왔을 테니까 질서의 신이 요구하는 대가는 가혹하지 아크는 희망이 아니라 희생이다 <웃음> 주시자가 부르고 있군 베아트리스 가라 운명의 계승자 <웃음> After L'Oreal's defeated, and Kadan's like, hey, you passed my test, uh, you, Nineveh, and Kadan jump down from that platform, and then you land in like this interesting area. And then Nineveh's like, oh, I didn't even know an area like this existed. Only Kadan knew about it. Nobody else seemed to know about it. And this is the place that houses the seventh arc that Kadan had hidden. You also run into Arma, Armin and Carmine here, who Nineveh was poised to, she was alarmed and ready to attack. But Kadan's like, wait, stop. And then Armin's like, Sidereal Nineveh, we need to talk. So Armin now tells you what he said to Kadan back in Petrania in, a, in another scene where Kadan was hunting Carmine. Uh, Carmine considers. I mean, uh, Kadan considers Carmine to be the most dangerous being in the world and was trying to kill him early, but Armin stopped Kadan and he said something that we only now hear for the first time. Sidereal Lutera, 500 years ago in the Chain War, did not kill Khazaros, but rather sealed him in Mount Antares in Kurzan. And he did this in order to prevent further sacrifices. Kadan already knew this, but was curious on how Armin knew this, because there's no way Armin should have known this, and he wasn't there back then. And then Armin says the real big thing that gets Kadan to cooperate. Armin says that he knows where the location of the key Lutera retrieved from K Angle 500 years ago is. And in order to, to help Kadan, he asks Kadan to forcibly break open the seal to Algatia in Arcadia back at the beginning of this quest. And so now we know that this secret place is what originally housed the key that Regulus entrusted to the Lazanef a thousand years ago. It, Regulus told the Lazanef, I will give you another chance as long as you have this key. And then during the events of the Chain War, Lutera and Kadan come to Algatia to get the key on instruction of Vergris because the key was needed to win the war against Khazaros. After they took the key, L'Oreal hid this from the rest of the Lazanef. And then after the events of the Chain War, Kadan came back and hid his piece of the Ark where the key once was. Back to the present, Kadan and Carmine reveal a truth to everyone. The Ark holds absolute power to create or destroy, very similar to the power of Regulus himself, the God of Order. And he, Carmine kind of talks about how the world has become greedy because of the power of the Ark. 
and those who gained its power paid no price, while the innocent cried out to Regulus, who never answered back. The world, which should be full of light and order, is now crumbling, which is essentially chaos itself. And the reason for this, the reason that Regulus did nothing, is because Regulus left the world. He left long ago already, even though people thought he was still there. Regulus has been gone for a long time, and Carmine reveals that Regulus has left the world in pursuit of becoming not only the god of order, but also the god of chaos and the god of everything. Yes, this guy has some serious, serious... Uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Narcissism going on. His goal is to become the god of all things. And now it's reiterated that the price demanded by Regulus is harsh and that the Ark is not a symbol of hope, but rather sacrifice, which we have heard Kadan tell you before when you first met him back then. The sentence is reiterated that the symbol is not of hope, but rather of sacrifice. Then a light flashes and Beatrice calls out to you and Kadan approaches you and says that you now stand where Lutera stood 500 years ago, faced with a new choice as the new chosen one. And he asks you to finish the journey that Lutera did not complete 500 years back. Agatunel Piscarta. Ortusra di Cesta Kayange Matimne Ilgopea Kaga Hanaro Moigo Idea Tidio Mason did a sake cuno Egos in Orangegan Tangshinaga Mason did a gil Kidariwatan Iaki. 세상의 비밀이자 아크의 진실 아크에는 거대한 창조의 힘이 담겨 있습니다 주신 루페온께서는 이 힘을 이용해 세상을 빚어냈지요 그리고 깨닫게 되셨습니다 아크로 창조해낸 세상은 아크에 의해 소멸할 수도 있다는 사실을 두려워진 루페온께서는 하나의 아크를 일곱 개로 찍고 마지막으로 하나의 안배를 더 만들어 두셨습니다 그것은 바로 나눠진 아크를 하나로 묶어낼 열쇠 루페온께서 라제니스에게 부여했던 단 하나의 의무 성역에 안치되어 오랜 시간 비밀리에 지켜온 열쇠의 아크를 하지만 어느 날 갑자기 열쇠는 자취를 감췄습니다 마치 처음부터 존재하지 않았던 것처럼 Oh. Sorry, the MP4 kind of loops. Yeah, I know. It's Eris because I'm deleting the files as I'm doing lower arc so that I can free up space on my uh on my drive. <laughs> don't worry. Uh we'll get to the song, don't worry. 
Anyways, you meet Beatrice, who tells you that the universe has always operated by the rules left by Regulus, and you deliver the seventh arc to her, the Arc of Eternity. She says that you've always controlled your own destiny, whereas every other person in this universe, their destiny has been premeditated from the beginning. And she wants to join you in the new path that you forge ahead. Because all the arcs have been collected, Beatrice can now tell you the secret of the world. She was binded by silence until the Seeker collected the seven arcs. She says that Regulus used the arc to create the world and pretty much everything in Omnium uh, many, many, many years ago. But after he used it, he realized that the arc also held the equal power of destruction. The arc could also destroy anything that it created. With this fear, he took the arc and divided it into seven pieces and created an eighth arc in addition to them. This eighth arc is the key required to unify the seven fragmented arcs. And this was the duty that he placed on the Lazenith to watch over the key. But one day, the key disappeared, as if it never existed. Lost 
So that is the big title drop, pretty much. Um, now you know. Now you know that all of those seven arc pieces that you've been collecting this entire time is not what the name of the game Lost Ark was about. The Lost Ark has always been the eighth arc. The key to unifying the seven arcs that Lutera used back in the Chain War 500 years prior. Which pretty much marks the end of the prologue of the game. Yes, the game has just begun, essentially. So now, you know, you've you've delivered the seventh fragment and Beatrice is like, okay, now you gotta find that eighth arc, seven out of eight. Yeah, and you can ask her a few questions. So the lost arc is the first and end of all of the arcs. K-Angle was originally the sanctuary to house it, but after Lutera used the arcs to seal Khazaros 500 years ago, the eighth arc, the key, disappeared. And this is why Kadan is willing to cooperate with Armin and Carmine, because they said they know where the key is. They know. She also reveals her role as the Watcher is to oversee all things in Omnium, but because she sees all in the universe, she has a taboo where she cannot intervene in Destiny's direction. However, the taboo states that once the Seeker has gathered the Arcs, the Watcher can reveal the truth to them and help lead them to unite the Arcs back into one. Trixian also transforms to reveal its true appearance, which is a flashbang, and it is where the Seeker unites and uses the Ark, as Lutera did 500 years ago. And now Beatrice says, You must find the Lost Ark now! 7 out of 8. And so you go back down to Elgatia, and as you go back down to Elgatia, you'll, you find Armin by the cliffside. And it's really awkward. You walk up to him, and you're like, Armin! And then he's like, dot, dot, dot. And then you're like, Armin! And he's like, oh, you. Hello, long time no see. You haven't seen him since the abandoned the uh, Lost Wind Cliffs incident. So, again, it's like first actual meeting where you can talk, where things are aren't aren't falling apart around you. You talk for a moment, telling him you were worried about him, and then he's like, "I have to go where my destiny began, in order to fulfill the destiny that Lutera could not." And then you know this is an allusion to Pletch, which is the next continent in Korea, and uh, you know he leaves. He leaves, just like that. You talk to him for two minutes. He said, I had to go where my destiny began, and he leaves, leaving nothing behind. Just like that. Then, Albion is like chilling nearby, and then Albion's like, okay, Vergus wants to meet with you, but he doesn't talk. He just kind of does like that horse sound in the plateau of destiny. And this is a continuation of when you met Vergus, Back in North Vern, you guys remember when Sigmund was about to blow up North Vern and then that, that big gold dragon came and then was like... All confused. And, that, and then he saves everyone, you know, by defusing that bomb. And then he's like, come meet me in... Uh, in the dreamless paradise so that you can determine the fate of your people. And so finally, you are meeting with Vergris face to face to determine the fate of humanity. Uh, Vergris kind of goes on and says uh, Arcacia is a shithole and the Guardian's role has always been to reset Arcacia when it becomes a shithole so that everything can go back to the way it was. Um, and he's unsure if humanity should be included in the Great Reset because like, you know, humanity kind of killed the penguins in that one island and it's fucked up. So he asks you to make a case as to why humanity deserves a chance when they reset Arcacia. And then you realize you don't know how to talk. You have been a mute this entire game series so far. And so if it's up to you to save the world by making a case for your people, 
humanity's fucked. And so Beatrice, realizing that it's a huge mistake to leave you in charge of this, uses telepathy and is like, Vergris, I'll talk on his behalf. Which is where the meme of Beatrice being your attorney comes into play. And her reason as to why humanity deserves a chance is because you worked hard, you gathered the arcs, and you made many friends along the way. And then Varagris is like, Hmm, that sounds good to me. The Guardians of Light stand with you. That's all it took. That's actually all it took. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. And then Varagris leaves. He flies with all the winged guardians and leaves. But all the turtles and anything that doesn't have wings get left behind, and it's really sad. And you may be wondering, wait a second, but I still kill two guardian raids every single day for mats. I thought they were my friends. Is this really okay? And that's why they are updating guardian raids. They are making it... Oh, you know what? We'll come, we'll come to this in a moment. We'll, we'll get to this. We'll get to this. So, yeah. The story after Elgatia now. These are the events that happen afterwards. So you head back to Elgatia and you find Alexia in the military district. She's one of the militants. And she tells you that the swords of the Lazanith are searching for you. And you meet with Azakiel in near the near the round table. You remember the round table where they had a meeting? And he says, get this, we're going to dismantle the round table, but not literally, figuratively. The whole oligarchy of the swords making all the decisions for their race are finally being dismantled. Uh, however, they also memed it literally because they want to go check out what was in the basement of Elgatia, which leads us to this. Cube의 전개를 해제한다. So that actually happened even earlier because when you and the swords head down to the basement of Algesia, all the cube technology is missing. Kadan snuck in before everyone else and summoned his weapon. 
and said, deactivate cube technology. He had the power to manipulate the cube and he stored it inside of his weapon. At the very end, he says everything to protect Arcacia before the scene fades out to black. But besides for all of that, uh, the cube technology has gone missing and nobody knows where it went. The swords don't know that Kadan has taken it. You don't know that Kadan has taken it. Only we as a player are given this context and this information that Kadan snuck into the basement and stole the HAL technology. Azakiel before mentioned that they were dismantling the round table of the swords and they would go back to the culture of the past to an old system that the, the Lazanith used to use uh, before the round table was established. In a new ruling system, they would collect the opinions of all citizens on decision making. All of them. Uh, the round table was only established back then when they were imprisoned by L'Oreal, but now that the Lazanith are free, they are now technically freed. Uh, you know, they want to go back to this. But Azakiel asks you if you, in your journeys in Arcacia, if you found any solutions to logistical problems associated with this, because asking the opinions of all people in their society has issues too. And you go over the ruling systems of Lutera, Vern, and Arthatine and their unique solutions to the problem of decision making. So with, uh, you know, with Lutera, it has a monarchy, they have a king, they make decisions quickly, and the decisions of a king means that if there's any problems, a decision can be made very, very quickly. Vern, on the other hand, has a queen and a senate, and their dynamic re uh, relation means that there is some representation beyond that of a monarchy, but at the same time they have a ruling system of authority, the queen, and that kind of power balance keeps things in check. And then finally, we have Arthatine, and Arthatine, I forgot the name of their ruling system, but it's a ruling system of people that are experts in specific fields, uh, and they make the decisions as experts in these different areas. And so Azakiel kind of looks, uh, you know, he kind of like thinks about uh, what you said and he's like, maybe we can find a solution uh, based off of this. So they're going to have that meeting for the first time where all the Lazanith are in one place and they just kind of discuss things together. And the person leading this meeting is, uh, it's actually Nineveh, and Nineveh, she gives a very empathetic speech to everybody. Oh wait, that's a... Uh... oh my camera's off. Wait, it's... it's frozen. It's frozen! Help! Anyways, she leaves the meeting and then she gives a very empathetic speech to the people and she pretty much just reiterates what she said to the round table back then when she was asking for help because, you know, Kazaros is getting resurrected and the whole point of coming here in the first place was to recruit the Lazaneth to help against the impending war against Kazaros and... She leads it into asking if the Lazanth will join the fight against Khazaros, who will resurrect soon, and that 500 years ago, they turned a blind eye and didn't help. When asking everyone's opinions, though, there's very mixed responses. Some support assisting Arcacia, but there are still many that oppose it. They don't want to intervene. They want to stay in Algacia. And people are discussing back and forth, but the important people that you've met, especially the likes of Tien and Azakiel, they stand by you. They will be there to help you. And so you and Nineveh, you guys just take off ahead while uh, while they're discussing to head back to Arcacia to see what's going on down there. 
Uh, and, you know, that's when we saw the scene now with Hedon. And we now know that he took the Hell technology. Back on the ground, you tell Nineveh everything that you discussed with Beatrice. Okay? Everything that you guys talked about, uh, including the existence of the Lost Ark that uh, her comrade Lutera used to defeat Kazaros, you tell her about it, and she's thinking about clues to locating it. But then... Uh, Shandy appears. Not Shandy himself, but like one of those like little spirit owls that he sends out, right? Uh, Shandy appears, and he tells you guys that they have found traces of Kekul Sedon uh, back in Boria territory, the place where you where you defeated him in the first place. Um, and so you make your way over there. And Shandy arrives, and they tell you that one of the guardians has gone completely like haywire. They are, they are just uh, out of control and attacking everybody. And you talk with Shandy, and you tell him about how Kekul Sedon, back in Araya, infected Albion with madness. And then Shandy's like, that's impossible. A common demon shouldn't have the power to inf influence a direct creation of God. That is not something that he should be capable of doing. So you go to the site of the creature and you find that the guardian that's been infected with madness is actually Mystic, who you had seen uh, Kekul Sedon had uh, interacted with previously in a, in a different report quest. Uh, And you confront Mystic, but before Mystic can harm you, Vergris's power, his voice and power, appears and purifies Mystic, stopping Mystic's rampage. And now you're just kind of chill. And now you can go to a site where traces of Kekul Sedon's madness power is located. This is in the past. <笑>あ、<laughs> flashing back to that scene, we see that Kakul actually resummons a new shadow of Sedon. Kakul Sedon refers to not one individual, but actually both the little doll and the, the clown. The little doll's name is Kakul, and the bigger clown fuck, his name is Sedon, and their two names together make Kakul Sedon. It's like Kate Sith from the Final Fantasy series. Um, he says that because of the events that have just happened, uh, he kind of has to stop being a Legion commander because, you know, now it's implied that he's dead. 
uh, and to, to others around him. And uh, Kekul's like, so we go back to how we were before. And then Sedon's like, oh, well, first I got to refill my power, which is what leads him to Areha to, to absorb the, the island, the island's power and to regain his strength. Um, however, the new context that we learn during all of this is that Carmine witnessed all of this. He witnesses and he says the shadows are moving. He refers to Echo Sedon as the shadows. Sedon, on the way out, actually notices Carmine behind him and says, It's not time yet. Uh, and then he calls him Incomplete One. And this is not the first time we see this name for Carmine. Actually, back when Carmine was standing, on that platform with L'Oreal, L'Oreal also calls Carmine the Incomplete One. That is like a special name. Oh, I'm sorry, Imperfect. Uh, the Imperfect One, Incomplete One, either or. Both of those names kind of apply and work. Um, so he refers to them as that. And then they make their way and they kind of just kind of split, split ways. So... Lutera, who was present at the time when dealing with Mystic, he says he'll investigate the matter, and then Nineveh says that she'll also share the news with others. And then, Nineveh tells you to look for Allegro. Remember on Promise Isle, the bard who you talk to and everything like that? She says you need to talk, look for Allegro and talk to uh, him about what happened in Inogatia, because when the bird flew past you and reverted time, that voice that we heard belonged to Allegro. So she wants to know what his connection is with the god Procyon. Uh, yeah. So... She thinks that there's a connection there, so you sail over to Promise Isle to look for Allegro. When you arrive there, you find that Allegro is missing. And in his absence, you find a note, and the note is from him, and he thanks you for saving his people in the events of Algatia, meaning he knew he knows everything that has happened. Uh, and he says that he has found the voice of God and gives you instructions on where to go to follow your fate. And he reassures you that your fate will allow you two to cross paths again. The note brings you to Carmine's hideout, that place that you literally visited once before for your second awakening. You are now revisiting to play the Song of Remembrance once again. So, he had to Promise Isle. It's just empty. No Allegro there. Nowhere to be seen. And then you head to uh, Car Carmine's Hideout, and you go to the throne area, and you play the Song of Remembrance. <笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> 이런 아만 아직도 쓸모없는 인과의 굴레에 매여 있는 건가? 응? <웃음> 너무 늦지는 말라고 시작과 끝이 비로소 연결되고 있으니까 말이야. <웃음> 이제 뭐지 않았다. 안 so in this flashback scene which happens after the events of Elgesia, Carmine's like, "Oh, did you have a nice time reuniting with your buddy?" He's like, "Are you ready now? We have to go meet the sleeping lord of the abyss, Kazaros." But Armen's like, "Wait. Before we go, 
there's somewhere I need to go first. And after your discussion with the place where he needs to go back to the origin of his destiny, it's assumed that this place that he needs to go first is Pletch. Pletch, 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 Pletch whatever. Armin, he's like, ah, oh, man, you're still attached to that. Whatever. Okay, don't be too late. And then he says, don't be too late as the beginning and the end are finally connected. He leaves through the portal and then leaves Armin to his own devices. And Armin looks at his hand, which is glowing, and he says, not long now. So you go back to Nineveh, back at the Whispering Islet. And you tell her about Allegro, the note that you left behind, the things that you saw. And Nineveh, she's just like, okay, well, you know what? It's just really important that we find the Lost Ark. And like, that's basically it. Uh, and then after your meeting with, with Nineveh, which pretty much concludes this part, uh, there's one more cutscene uh, that doesn't take place here. エボクレイスが Unchukten Simyong e Piori, Simyon Rungul Dununda. Piroso, Chisawa Hondurun, Seroke Sio Jirida. Kiko itarges mida. Modin Gossen, Tangshin Kesa Ikishinandero. That's one, of, that's one of those like little scenes that play out like, meanwhile, over here, this is what's going on. So, Roshaza meets with Kazaros, and she tells Kazaros that Vergris has made his choice. And it's pretty much just like asking what Kazaros wants to do. And then Kazaros states that in the chaos created by Lutero's arrogance, order will lead to ruin. And then he just goes on about some mumbo jumbo about how, you know, uh, about like the impending fate of Arcacia. And then Rosh is just like, I will follow you wherever you go, whatever you do, all that kind of stuff. So she's like just swearing her allegiance, you know? So um, the, the, the remaining Legion generals are aware of Varagris' decision to side with the Seeker in all of this, which is you. And so with that, you get one more quest line, and in this quest line, Varagris' voice comes from across the sea, and you and Nineveh hear it. He says that Varagris is calling out to you to go and speak with him, and she also recites some stuff regarding your fate. And when you arrive at Varagris' nest, the Chuos, those, dog, those doggos, they just let you in, and they don't attack you, they're just like, go meet with him. Evergrace greets you and he tells you the story of the Guardian. He says that Guardians are mixtures of order and chaos, and their role has always been to reset Arcacia when things are dire. He says that while the Guardians of Order will guard you on your path to destiny, the Guardians of Chaos don't give a shit about that. Even if all Guardians originated from Evergrace, it doesn't matter, they're not gonna listen to him, and they won't they probably won't agree with his decision to side with you. Because the Guardians of Chaos left uh with Vulcan back during the Chain War 500 years ago to Petrania. They're guardians that we have not seen yet. They are allied with the demons. Berger says that the Guardians of Chaos are getting stronger and that you will have to fight them in the near future. In the meantime. He says that the Guardians of Light will help by training you. Hence, 
the Trials of Varigris. Yes, the update to the Guardian Raid UI now splits all Guardians that you fought from this point with all Guardians that you fight from here on forward. Meaning all the Guardians you fought from this point are all Guardians of Light and they're good guys that are helping you train and then you beat them up and then give you some mats or some shit like that. While all Guardians that you fight moving forward are evil Guardians that you have to purify the same way Mystic was purified in that quest line. So he just gives you all that information and then that UI change is happening relatively soon. Yada yada yada. First Guardian of Chaos that we're fighting is in August, which is Sonova. Uh, Nineveh is waiting for you outside, and she tells you that if the Guardians of Chaos are waking up, then it's probable that Balkan is beginning to make his move. And Balkan is THE Guardian of Chaos. He is Guardian Luen's equal, and one of two of sentient Guardians that were basically the commanders of the Guardians underneath Vergris. However, Balkan defected to Khazaros' side during the Chain War 500 years ago, which almost led to humanity's demise. So... With Balkan making his move, we can only assume that at some point or another, we're probably going to have to fight Balkan as well. And that's it for the after story. The after story only served to kind of give us some contextual clues on what everyone is up to. It seems that every single party is making their moves and is associated with each other in some way, shape or form. Uh, just the other day, we actually saw a video that Duplay made, and in this video that Duplay made, he talks about some of the lyrics from the theme song of the Brelshaza theme, you know, the fish song. Oh, that one. And in those lyrics, it does have a very important or very interesting hint to what may be up ahead. The lyrics do mention three people crying out. And the three people that the lyrics mention are in Latin, but they mention the imperfect one or the incomplete one. They mention the shadow and the lyrics also mention the forsaken one. If we know who the shadow is, if that's Keiko Sedon, if we know who the imperfect one is, if that is Carmine, who is the forsaken one? Duplay thinks it's Kadan, but I don't know. Who do you guys think it is? I think that's a very plausible thing, considering all three of their names begin with the letter K, and Gold River mentioned that uh, powerful characters in this game's universe, their names tend to begin with the letter K. But who knows? Maybe it's him? Maybe it's not. And so... Elgatia's story comes to an end. They are currently trying to figure out how their race will proceed, though they're going with something, I guess, democratic. Uh, Armin is headed to Plesh, while Carmine is headed to meet with Khazaros. Khazaros and Brelshaza and the other Legion commanders are aware of Vergris's choice and are proceeding onwards as planned. Ekul Sedon is still operating independently, But they seem to have a lot of similarities. Keiko Sedon wants to throw the world into chaos. We know Keiko Sedon is one of the ones who, one of the original demons. He's been there since the very beginning, since Ezerbet serves him, and she only serves the primal beings. And Carmine is also seeking a chaotic outcome for the world. L'Oreal mentioned that Carmine is the one who leads the world to chaos in every single timeline that he witnessed in over 670 million simulations, except for the one they're currently in. And Carmine just simply brushes it off and says that there's beauty and chaos in the world. And so they seem to be after the same goal, chaos, whatever that means. And the story of Lost Ark in general it tries its very hardest to draw a very fine line between what is good and evil, uh, order and chaos, and light and darkness. Things that are good are not naturally things of order and uh, are not naturally things of light either. They're, they can be jumbled. 
just how how a guardian of order like Dark Legros exists. You would think that it's an evil creature, but in fact, it's one of the guardians of order. And so it's very difficult to tell who the good guy is. And there's a lot of confusion as well as to who Kadan's identity is. L'Oreal really, really tried to press the point that you don't actually know Kadan well, that he was there. 500 years ago, standing beside Lutera when he united the Arcs, but we also saw in one of the simulations a timeline where Kadan is not one of the Sidereals, and we also see in a, in, a, in a hallucination in the middle of Brelshaza's raid, a hallucination where Kadan potentially betrays you and kills Nineveh, but you don't know if you should believe that or not. You don't know if that's prophetic or if that's just a hallucination and Brashaz is trying to trick you. And so there's many questions to be asked, but the story will continue onwards. We'll be dealing with Akan soon, and then once Akan is dealt with, comes Thamine. What is Thamine's role in all this? We're also unsure about that as well. How significant is he to the story? How is he related to Kadan? They both have long silver hair. What's under Thamine's helmet? Is it just a bunch of Tukis standing on each other's shoulders and wearing a silver wig? We don't know, but maybe we'll see by the end of this year. I hope you guys enjoyed Lore Arc. That basically concludes the first saga of Lost Ark. After many, many years, the first chapter of Lost Ark has come to an end, and moving forward begins the real story of Lost Ark. Uh, we are approximately 20 to 25% through the entirety of the story that Gold River envisioned. And now the journey is to find the real Lost Ark, the real, real Lost Ark. All the parties and factions that are that have their own objectives and agendas are beginning to make their move and the story is begin beginning to unravel itself we now have many additional details uh, about the game's world including one of the most important ones that regulus might not have been such a good guy after all That was really loud. Okay. <laughs>